Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from our Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with our news, taking a look to our headlines. In Mexico, senior government official announced that there are more than 73,201 people recorded as missing. In France, on the eve of July 14th, the French National Day, President Emmanuel Macron emphasized the greatness of the army to give way to the women and men in white coats who fought against the coronavirus. In Asia, Singapore's economy slipped into a recession in the second quarter, contracting by a record 41.2% from the previous three months. This is where our headlines, we begin with our news, you stay with us. We begin with our news. In Mexico, a senior government official announced that there are more than 73,201 people recorded as missing, including about 2,394 who were registered missing this year. Most of them after a military anti-drug offensive deployed in 2006, the year since which 6,625 bodies have been found in clandestine grave. The Ministry of the Interior announced on Monday, under the launch of the military strategy against drug trafficking, 1,523 people were reported missing, of whom the first case occurred in 1964. One of the most emblematic cases is that of the 43 students from the rural, rural school of Ayotzinapa who disappeared between the night of the 26th and 27th of September in 2014 in the town of Iguala in Guerrero State. Since the 1960s, we must remember that the first record dates back to 1964, and today we have 73,201 people reported missing. From December 2006 to today, we have 3,978 registered mass graves throughout the country, where 6,625 bodies have been exhumed. In Venezuela, the special voter registration process began this Monday to guarantee the maximum citizen participation in the parliamentary elections to be held on December 6. The process will be extended until July 26, while 551 registration points have been activated across the country under strict health measures due to COVID-19 pandemic. During the next two weeks, Venezuelans voters will be able to register or update their personal information, such as those who change their address and polling stations. More than 1,100 electoral agents will be on hand to assist voters between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. every day until July 26, as we just said. And Colombia is facing a critical situation due to the rapid spread of the novel coronavirus. The increase in COVID-19 cases places Colombia in the fourth most affected country in South America, reporting more than 150,000 cases and over 5,000 fatalities. The spread of the virus in the country coincides with the economic reopening plan promoted by the national government. Meanwhile, health workers denounce a lack of supplies to treat patients while the demand for intensive care units continues to grow and hospitals are overcrowded. In Mexico, they have reported almost 300,000 COVID-19 cases after reporting almost 4,500 new cases on Monday during his usual press briefing at the National Palace, the Mexican Under Secretary of Prevention and Health Promotion reported that of the current cases, 29.26% are hospitalized and 70.74% are receiving outpatient treatment. They, he also noted that more than 184,000 patients have recovered from the virus, 
which he said was very encouraging while the COVID-19 death toll stands at over 35,000. The doctor called on the population to continue to follow guidelines to curb the spread of the virus. We continue talking about COVID-19. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic in the Caribbean island of Cuba, they are manufacturing ventilators which are essential for the treatment of critically ill COVID-19 patients. The locally produced medical equipment, aside from providing assisted ventilation, includes oxygen measurement capability and applications with offline support. The ventilators are being deployed, developed at Havana's Neuroscience Center with funding from the European Union and the NGO MediCuba Switzerland, among others. The ventilators are expected to be ready by October. At the beginning of the pandemic, the Cuban government attempted to purchase several ventilators but was unable to do so due to the United States criminal blockade against the island. And also in Cuba, I'm talking about culture. On July 18th and 19th, the concert for Cuba from Chicago Hot House will unite artists online against the U.S. blockade. The start a started event will condemn the economic, commercial and financial blockade imposed on Cuba by the United States for almost six decades. Musicians Dion Warwick, Michael M.C. Donald, John Cleary and many others will feature the online concert will also see performances by Cuban stars such as La Orquesta Aragón, Alexander Abreu, Los Van Van, Omar Aportuondo, among other Cuban artists. The event also supports the nomination of Cuba's Henry Reef International Medical Contingent for the Nobel Peace Prize for its contribution to fight against the novel coronavirus pandemic around the world. And the government of Antigua and Barbuda has moved one step closer to making the island of Barbuda an island fully powered by solar energy. Prime Minister Gaston Brown explained that the move stems from an agreement not negotiated in 2017 after Barbuda was decimated by Hurricane Irma. We decided to make these funds available towards the green energy project for Barbuda. So the plan is to literally um, transform Barbuda into a green island to make it perhaps the first green island or first island to be powered exclusively by green energy within the Caribbean. Like this, we go for a first break. Remember, follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and on my account at Laura P. Telesur. We'll be right back with some more news. We are back with our news. On the eve of the July 14, the National French Day, President Emmanuel Macron emphasized the greatness of the armies to give way to the women and men in white coats who fought against the coronavirus. This was said in the 2020 edition of the national holiday in the reduced COVID-19 format that will be dedicated this year to the units mobilized during the health crisis. exceptionnellement. But tomorrow, the armies, and this is your greatness, will also be able to give way to the men and women in white coats who have fought, Mr. Minister, and who continue to fight in French Guiana in particular, where you were yesterday in the company of the Prime Minister and the Minister of the Overseas, but also in a number of places in our country, who are continuing to fight, yes, to provide a bulwark in the exceptional health crisis that has hit us, and that continues to affect us. We continue. Bulgarians gather for a fifth consecutive day to protest against corruption and to demand the resignation of Conservative government of Prime Minister 
Boyko Borisov. The protests in the capital were inspired by an unprecedented raid by heavily armed police and prosecutors on the presidential headquarters on Thursday. The surges on Thursday sparked public anger and brought thousands of demonstrators on the streets of Sofia to condemn the raids as an attack by the government and the chief prosecutor against the socialist-backed Radev. Over 3,000 protesters shouted mafia and resign outside the government headquarters in Sofia and marched to parliament. Obviously, the time has ripened for change again. This is what took everybody out in the streets because the situation is unbearable any longer. The same things happening year after year without any hope for change. We do not come closer to Europe. We get away from it with every year. Moving on to other topics, the United States remains the world's hotspot, which some states see in huge spikes in cases in the state of Florida, where in the country the 15,300 new cases have been reported there on Sunday and would have put it in the top 10 globally. The country reported 3,361,042 COVID-19 cases, according to Johns Hopkins University. Meanwhile, the death toll has risen to almost 135,582 cases. As U.S. faces an alarming spike in coronavirus cases, White House Press Secretary Kyle Maxene assured reporters that the United States is doing very well with the pandemic. When you compare us to other countries, we have the most testing in the world. When you compare us to other countries on case fatality rate, other industrialized nations, um, we're very low and beating most countries, um, if not all, in Europe. So uh, we're doing a lot on the world stage, a lot right. Um, noted that we were supposed to have a ventilator shortage, and as it turned out, the U.S. actually sent ventilators all around the world. So the U.S. response has been historic, um, and by several metrics, including the three I just mentioned, we're beating uh, the rest of the world. As this was announced, Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Diseases, said the United States is in a resurgence of new coronavirus cases with daily cases nearly double the country's previously high baseline. Infection rates have been also rising in the south and west of the country. We have peaked at a high level and stayed at about 20,000 cases per day for months until just a recently, about a couple of weeks ago, when we tried to start opening in certain of the states, and as the senator said very appropriately, sometimes a bit too soon, sometimes jumping over some of the checkpoints, we now have a resurgence where we've gone up as high as 57,000 cases, which is almost double what it was at our so-called high baseline. Taking that into consideration, also United States, California Governor Gavin Newsom on Monday reintroduced lockdown measures to contain the spread after reporting 8,358 new coronavirus cases on Sunday. Governor ordered all indoor restaurants, bars and movie theaters to close again as coronavirus cases soar across the state. Also, in despite of President Trump administration pushing for full school reopenings in the fall while the pandemic is setting new daily case records in many parts of the country. Education officials in Los Angeles and San Diego said the schools will remain closed when classes resume next month, with lessons all moved to be online. We continue United States. Firefighters are still battling a blaze that broke out in on USS Bonham Richard combat ship in San Diego, while the number of injured have amounted to at least 57. A top Navy official revealed that the fire suppression system was inoperable when the blaze erupted while the ship was docked in San Diego Bay. Flames tore through a warship for a second day on Monday, causing concentrations of fine particulate matter could reach unhealthful levels. The fire started on Sunday morning aboard the USS Bonham Richard, triggering an explosion that rocked San Diego Bay. The ship was undergoing renovation and had just 160 people on board. 
Uh, for over 24 hours, as you know, um, uh, we have more than 400 brave sailors uh, from commands all across uh, this waterfront uh, and around San Diego um, have been fighting to save USS Bonhomme Richard, uh, along settle uh, federal fire um, in here in San Diego. Together, we continue to fight the ship both on board and from above using helicopters from Helicopter Sea uh, Combat Squadron 3. And the World Health Organization has warned this Monday that there would be no return to normality anytime soon as too many countries were mishandling their response to the coronavirus pandemic. After a daily record of over 230,000 new coronavirus cases were reported on Sunday, the WHO said the pandemic was only going to get worse unless people stuck to the basics of physical distancing and hand washing and wearing masks. The WHO Director General warned that countries that were easing their way out of lockdowns were now witnessing a resurgence of the virus because they were not following proven methods to reduce the risk. He stressed, the President Director General of the WHO stressed that too many countries were headed in the wrong direction. Yesterday, 230,000 cases of COVID-19 were reported to WHO. Almost 80% of those cases were reported from just 10 countries and 50% come from just two countries. Although the number of daily deaths remains relatively stable, there is a lot to be concerned about. All countries are at risk of the virus, as you know. I want to be straight with you. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. I repeat, there will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. But there is a roadmap to a situation where we can control the disease and get on with our lives. Time for another break. We'll be right back. Just stay tuned with us. We are back with our news. Singapore's economy has slipped into recession in the second quarter, contracting by a record 41 0.2% from the previous three months and is facing its biggest slump ever this year as coronavirus lockdown steps hammer the trade-reliant city-state. On a year-on-year -on -year basis, a gross domestic product, GDP, plummeted 12.6%. Preliminary data from the Ministry of Trade and Industry showed this Tuesday. Economists had forecast a 10.5% contraction and the DGP slump market the second consecutive quarter of contractions for the wealthy city state having declined at revised 3.0.3% year on year in the first quarter and 3.3% quarter on quarter meeting the definition for a technical recession. And the oil market is getting closer to balance as demand gradually rises apex, Secretary General said on Monday, two days before the group and ally Russia meet to decide whether to ease output curbs from August. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and allies known as OPEC Plus have been cutting output since May by 9.7 million barrels per day after the coronavirus crisis destroyed a third of global demand and caused a price collapse. After July, the cuts are due to taper to 7.7 .7 million barrels per day until December, although a final decision has yet to be taken. A panel called the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee, the JMMC, meets on Wednesday to recommend the next level of cuts. Moving on to other topics, Tunisian Foreign Minister Mouradine Eray welcomed his Algerian counterpart Sabri Boukandoum to discuss the regional mediation in respect to the Libyan conflict. The essential thing is to achieve real Arab solidarity. 
This will make it possible to deal with the issues that bind us in the Arab house. You know, today, all records are dealt with outside the Arab house. This is not acceptable. The Commonwealth, Algerian and Tunisian, is good. We do not have oil interests, economic or views on Libya wealth. We want security, stability and respect for living unity, territorial unity and unity of decision making. And Jordan's King Abdullah warned on Monday that any unilateral Israeli move to annex territory in the occupied West Bank would fuel instability and dim hopes of a final settlement of the decades-old Arab-Israeli conflict. King Abdullah stated that the only path to be comprehensive and lasting Middle East peace was the establishment of an independent Palestinian state based on land captured by Israel in the 1967 war and with East Jerusalem as its capital. Jordan has led a diplomatic campaign along with most other European countries that opposes Israeli plans that in Sichas, annexing parts of the occupied West Bank as part of, an, of a deal being promoted by U.S. President Donald Trump's administration known of the so-called peace plan. Kip Adla, a stunned U.S. ally, has also in recent months warned that Israeli policies along with Trump's so-called peace plan would lead to, the conflict, to a conflict in the region. And Morocco on Monday announced a return to lockdown measures in the northern port of the city of Tangiers in the face of a new outbreak of the novel coronavirus weeks after easing nationwide restrictions. The city of about a million inhabitants was locked down at noon local time with public transport suspended, cafes and public spaces closed and movement restricted. Residents are only allowed to leave their homes in cases of extreme necessity. The Interior Ministry said that exceptional authorization from local authorities would be required for movement within or beyond the city. Morocco, with a population of 34 million, has recorded almost 16,000 cases and 255 deaths. And following the death of four people in protest on Friday, anti-government leader Mahmoud Diko has urged his supporters to refrain from violence and demonstrate peacefully. This movement that we have set in motion, I truly believe, is the beginning of a hope that must remain and that must continue, but with dignity, with calm, with respect for others. Ivory Coast Vice President Daniel Cablan Duncan stepped down this Monday. The announcement came just days after the sudden death of Prime Minister Amadou Khan Koubali on July 8th, according to a statement read by Chief of Staff Patrick Aiki. The Vice President handed in his resignation to the President, citing personal reasons on February 27th, and after several conversations, the President accepted it. A veteran figure of Ivorian politics, Duncan served as Foreign Minister from 2011 to 2012, and then as Prime Minister in charge of Economy and Finance from 2012 to 2017. In January 2017, he became the first Vice President in Ivory Coast history, taking up a past created under a new constitution adopted in 2016. The first Kenyan doctor who died from COVID-19 was buried this Monday. Health officials wearing personal protective equipment accompanying the body of Dr. Doren Adisa Lugaliki whose funeral was attended by just a few relatives. Dr. Lugaliki was 38 years old and died on Friday, four days after being admitted to hospital. She leaves behind twin daughters, and according to Kenyan's Health of Ministry, nearly 200 people have died of COVID-19 in the country, while the number of confirmed cases has now surpassed 10,000. For my sister, she had diabetes. Uh, doctors call it DKA, and that is what killed her. So, please, the people should avoid this stigmatization. It feels so bad when somebody looks at you like uh, he wants to run away from you and think maybe you can infect them. 
Like this, we come to the end of the Institute's brief. Of course, you can find this and much more other news on our website, TulsaEnglish.net, where you can read opinion articles, watch special interviews, and update yourself about COVID-19 numbers throughout the world. The invitation has been made. You continue with us with Telesur, always together, connecting our global thousand. Till next time, thank you for watching.